The Americas is a, uh, a wonderful place for amazing stories. Uh, humans have been there for a very, very long time. And therefore, each of these cultures can teach us something that we can learn and apply in the modern world. I actually have two jobs. Uh, I work as the head of the Americas at the British Museum, where I look after all of the Americas collections and do exhibitions and galleries on the stories of the Americas. And also, I make uh, television documentaries for the BBC. Um, and both of these provide an opportunity to talk about the wonders of the Americas, but they're very different ways of communicating stories. These are the expressions you use to describe both of these institutions. The BBC aims to enrich people's lives with programs and services that inform, educate, and entertain. And the British Museum has a, a little catchphrase slogan, which is a museum of the world for the world. So both of these institutions then offer me an opportunity to communicate stories. So what I do with my life is I, I, I often travel and work and carry out research in different parts of the Americas. I work with the collections of the British Museum, and then I come up with stories that I can then tell through the BBC or the British Museum. That I uh, and the kinds of stories that I like to do are ones which are socially relevant. So a, uh, a television series I did recently, a focus of research that I've done recently, is looking at different parts of Central America. So what is now sort of Mexico, uh, the Caribbean islands, uh, Costa Rica. Um, and what I was interested in is looking at how different civilizations have become complex, how different civilizations have risen up and become, um, become great in many ways, and trying to understand what are the mechanisms behind what drives different societies to develop over time.
because I believe that the Americas shows that there are different ways of societies organizing themselves. Um, in, throughout the Americas, we have very different types of ancient society. And so by understanding the differences between some of these societies, you can understand what is sustainable, what works well, and what didn't work in the past. so today, uh, I will explore one particular civilization, the Olmec. But I'll start with an exploration of the role of art, because this lecture will explore how art is related to power and the development of powerful societies. So, what is art? Uh, if we come up with a sort of simple definition of art, it's the physical manifestation of a thought or idea which is designed to elicit an emotional response from an audience. So if we look at the different art of different ancient cultures, we can understand them and understand what drives them much better. So this uh, slightly ugly object is one of my favorites in the Americas collection. Uh, it's actually a, a stone-carved sculpture um, which comes from the Inuit of Nunavut in the very high Arctic, so beyond the tree line where there are no trees, right on the edge of the Arctic. Um, and this object reflects what is important to the Inuit. It's actually a story. Um, should, I, should I take that and then I'll tell the story? 那今天这个大家看到的这件作品呢是虽然有点丑但是是他在他们的美洲服装里面他最爱的一个他来自北极圈内就北美最北面的女婴客人然后他事实上是讲的一个故事好彩智是使用所以这个 so object tells the story of an Inuit family who are fishing on the edge of the uh, of the sea ice um, in the far Arctic, when suddenly a crack appears and the ice flow thereon breaks off from the land and floats out into the Arctic Sea, and so all of the family are going to die because they are broken off from the land. But then, luckily, uh, two of the hunters who are part of the family spot a walrus that is swimming past, and they harpoon the walrus, drag the walrus up onto the ice flow and they build a kayak out of the skin and bones of the walrus, then the family get into the kayak and paddle back to the, to the shore and to safety. And the reason it's important is because it highlights what the Inuit value in their society. They value the resourcefulness of individuals, but they can always find hope, even in the most desperate of places. And it also shows their ability to live with their environment uh, and live with it successfully. 那他们这边讲的是一个有印客人的神话故事传说中有这么一家人他们到海边去打鱼然后因为这边都是海岸跟那个边缘在一起的然后他们在打鱼的时候他们所在的地方就跟那个大陆另外一边状态的旅行他们
呃路过，然后他们就把这个海象吃瞎了以后，就跑到湖边上面，呃，那家人就获得了肉，呃，并且拿下了骨头做了一个法子，然后家人就呃呃呃就此险境脱险了。嗯、呃，这件东西的重要意义在于它反映了呃因纽特人的呃价值观，一个是。呃，要坚持，即使在困境也不能放弃。另外一个也可以反映出印度特人他们，呃，和那个环境的关系，他们在怎样的环境里面，环境造成了什么影响。So now let's go. So Indian parts of the Americas have very different types of artistic traditions. So now let's go up to the、uh, the northwest coast of North America. That was where、um, the、uh, That was where the、um, uh, that that there is where that ice sculpture came from、um, from Nunavut, and now we're going to go here on the west, northwest coast of North America. 他刚才那个白颜色上面那一点呢，就是前面讲的印度特人那个艺术的出产地，叫呃叫 Nunavut 的那个地方。呃，然后呃，在不同美洲的不同地区呢，就是艺术传统也是不一样的。On the northwest coast of North America, there is the、um, community of the Haida, who are famous for making totem poles out of wood. These are very large wooden sculptures, which are another type of art. On these wooden sculptures, they carve their family crests that tell the lives of individuals. And at the top of these ones, for the size of Scott White, they would put burial boxes in the top. Of the wooden pole, and this would then delineate the story of the individual who was buried there. 那大家现在来到的是，呃，美洲北部、西北沿海的海达人，嗯、呃，他们，呃，他们是，呃，他们以他们的那个图腾柱出名了。然后这边就是大家看到是一种图腾柱，但是它是这种图腾柱是用于丧葬仪式的。嗯，它首先它上面的那个图案从上到下，呃，刻画的是，呃，海达人那个祖先，呃，家谱的传承。然后这个图腾柱它特殊的地方在于它是丧葬用柱，会在顶端留一个空间，然后把呃重要人物的那个尸骨放在里面。And these posts are lined up at the front of the village along the shoreline. So they're very visible to anyone who who paddles past with their kayak. They're a very expressive form of art that shows people's culture very prominently. Um, these posts are placed on the beach, and also on the shore. So when the villagers are in the village, they can see these posts and hear about their ancestors and their traditions. And they can also hear about their traditions. So now we can travel down to South America.、Um, here, this is northwest South America in the country of what is now Colombia, and this is a very different type of art form. This is from the culture called the Muisca,、um, who are lined up around central Colombia,、uh, around 600 AD, and this is what is called a pujo.、Uh, it's made out of gold and copper, and actually, you make this object out of wax. And then you, through the lost wax process, you then fill in the、uh, the wax void after you heated it up with the gold. But what's amazing about the tulko is that、um, there's only a few hours between the creation of the object and it being buried in the ground, because this object is not designed for public display. The actual power of the object is in the social memory that is created during its manufacture. So it's about the people who are witnessing the process of its creation that create the power of this art. This thing, we are now coming to North America. This thing is from North America, Colombia, in the Muisca region. The Muisca people are the Muisca people. They are located in Colombia, in the southern part of the country. They are from the Muisca people. They are from the Muisca people. This thing is called Tango. 呃，它的材质是金铜，然后采用的是希腊法制的。然后这件东西的重要意义在于，呃，它从被造出来到最后埋入土中，就是在仪式埋入土中前后大概不过几个小时，所以它不是一个呃非常呃就是面向公众的一个展示，而是就比较私人化的。它
他所代表他所象征的是一种社会的，呃，社会就是这当地社会，呃，一群人的共呃呃共同社会的一个、呃、共同社会记忆。呃，然后呢，当那个社会成员在这个革命仪式上面一起目睹他被倒出来之前被埋入地下，这个过程是最重要的。So we see those two, three very different artistic traditions reflecting very different cultures that they represent, the resourcefulness and connections to the environments that they lived, the dramatic forms and importance of kinship amongst the Haida, and the spirituality involved in making objects breathe moisture. But now let's focus on Mexico, uh, and that will be the area that I talk about today. 那前面大家看到了这三种，这三个艺术代表了三个不同的艺术传统，然后它反映的是三种不同的文化。呃，在这里举一个例子，然后现在我们来到墨西哥。The uh, Mexican cultures which are most famous are the Maya, and this is a jade plaque uh, delineating a, a, a Maya ruler sitting on a seat. With a with a little uh, a slave or, or someone paying homage to him down below, and it expresses that very uh, essence of power in the Maya world. Uh, And the Aztec culture of the Central Highlands, Mexico. This is a famous double-headed snake serpent uh, made out of turquoise inlays. So this is again these are all objects from the British Museum that I've shown you. Um, and this again reflects some of the uh, the double-coiled dual aspects of power within the Aztec world. 呃，这边大家看到的是阿兹特克，就玛雅之后的那个阿兹特克文明。呃，双头蛇的一件艺术品，然后是用玉松石做的，是当地的材料。呃，然后它双头蛇的这个形象代表的是在不同世界中进行的，呃呃呃，双头蛇它是连接不同世界的。But whilst the uh, Maya and Aztec are the most famous cultures in Mexico, they are also the people that the Europeans met when they arrived in Mexico in the uh, 16th century. But I think that if we need to understand the origins of the relationship between art and power and how people become powerful, we need to look at the oldest art tradition in Mexico. And for that, I'm going to focus on the Olmec of the Gulf of Mexico, which is just in the Gulf of uh, Mexico, which is taken here. Maya and Aztec are all quite ancient. They live in the 16th century, and also in the 16th century, Europeans came to North America and North America as well. But to consider the relationship between art and politics, we need to look at one of the oldest art traditions. 二零的文明，如果大家看到这个活动地区在呃方块里面是。So in the 1930s, um, a farmer was walking in the field and he saw a giant stone eye looking up at him, and uh, he got a group of workers together and they excavated down and they found this 是怎么被发现的？然后当时是一个农民在田里干活，然后突然就发现地里边有一个很大的猴子，很大的眼睛看着他。For many years,、uh, it was thought that this was just a Maya site in the Gulf of Mexico, but it wasn't until the advent of radiocarbon dating in the 1950s that people could actually date these archaeological sites, and everyone was astounded at their age because these sites went back three and a half to four thousand years. 呃，一开始呢，大家认为那个巨石头像是属于玛雅的代表的，它所在地点应该是在玛雅遗址，所以它应该是玛雅文化的。但是后来呢，经过考古学，呃，看几次的那个呃检测，发现它的年代非常早，然后年代早到令令考古学家感到非常的惊讶。那这边大家看到的是阿尔伯克的一个边大致的编年，就是说它可以早到离我们现在就三三千五百年到四千年前。So 
this represents the oldest art tradition, the oldest public art tradition in ancient Mexico. And this civilization of the Olmec then provides a window into how and why they developed the art that they did and what it meant about the development of their society. Today, I'll take you through just a couple of the Olmec sites, um, just so you know where they are. Uh, I'll be talking about this one, San Lorenzo. I'll be talking about La Venta. I'll mention El Acatu and El Manati. And these are the sites that I'll talk about today. Them, 
each of the 13 heads found at San Lorenzo, they're all very different. Some of them have got little scars and knocks in their eyes where they, where they represent real characteristics of individuals. And for me, what these objects represent is a reflection of this tipping point that is happening at San Lorenzo. Once you start to get large populations coming to live together, you can no longer be making all the decisions in your life on your own. You end up needing leaders who take over control of decision making. And for me, these individuals here represent the leaders of the Olmec society. So if these leaders are emerging for the first time and a new art tradition is emerging for the first time, what is it that motivates people to allow the rulers to take control and take control of their lives at sites like San Lorenzo? To answer that question, I will take you to the Halata Museum, uh, which is in the town, which is the modern day city of Veracruz. In the 1980s, um, the Mexican government took a very wise decision to invest heavily in their museums, um, and this is one of the museums they built. Uh, it's a very beautiful museum. And inside this museum, we start to get an indication of how this leadership is occurring and why, and, and the sort of the narrative that leaders are telling. So this is um, a photograph of two objects which are in the museum, and fortunately, these were found in their original archaeological context. So often, ancient objects are taken away from their original context, so it makes it hard to interpret them. But these were found um, at the site of El Asasun, and uh, it shows two Olmec leaders uh, kneeling down. They're holding these sort of batons of power. They have these elaborate headdresses which go down into capes behind them, and they have their very distinctive Olmec features. And they're bowing down to another object in front of them. This is what they're bowing down in front of, a very large jaguar. 
The jaguar is the uh, largest predatory cat that lives in this part of the world, and it's an, uh, an animal that really represents something very important, uh, both the Olmec and to today. It represents an animal that can live between a sort of liminal place, between a, a sort of a, a, a one paw in each side of different things. So it can represent the, the sort of border between lightness and darkness, day and night. The space and sky where it lives, the trees, and the ground below which it patrols. And also it's a very, uh, very important creature in, in, in being the top predator uh, in the region. 这里讲到现在可以带着这个东西呢是一个巨大的美洲豹虎的寓空间就是两个两种世界两种状态中的这个临界点也或者算是日和夜空间的临界点也可以是美国宝生活的那个树上面和它在日常跑的时候那个土地树和土这两个空间的预界and I'll just point out a couple of characteristics of the jaguar just to highlight. Here you look at the um, the ears, uh, the distinctive cleft which represents the ears, the large sort of almond-shaped eyes, uh, the flared mouth and bared teeth, and these sort of lines on the cheeks showing the, the lines of the cheek. So what you get in Olmec art and development of Olmec art is a thing called a were jaguar. The humans, the human leadership, is taking on the representation of the jaguar as if they are then taking on the powers of the jaguar, the ability to control this border. This powerful space between night and day, uh, the sky and the earth. Uh,今天大家看到的这个,呃,另外一种经常看到的人类艺术是这种半人半美洲报的形象,呃,它代表的是,呃,就统治者,呃,通过变形为美洲报,然后来获取美洲报所具有的那些,呃,超自然力。So these are all Olmec uh, objects that have been found in the region, and they're essentially human figures in the process of transformation into the Jaguar. So you can recognize all these features in both this object and the previous one with a sort of a human-shaped body, but here you see the distinctive um, ears, or representative ears, the flared mouth, um, and you start to see the characteristics of the Jaguar coming through. Uh,这些艺术都是在奥美克在墨西哥当地发现的。这边前面一几个呃是美洲豹的照片，然后这边大家看到它出现了一个人形，呃，里面好像全身是我们在这个雕像上面可以看到很多美洲豹的特征。And what we know from the archaeology is that it's not just stone objects that people are transforming to, to, to do this art. They're also transforming themselves. So individuals in our society are changing the shapes of their heads. They're binding the baby's skulls at a very early age and deforming the shape of the head. They are tattooing their faces and creating tattoos down the sides of their cheeks, and they're filing their teeth uh, to make sharpened teeth points on it. This is a, a jade Olmec art, um, and here you can see some of the tattooing on the cheeks and around the bottom of the lip, some of those filed shaped um, teeth, uh, the shaping of the eyes, and some evidence of cranial modification. 那当时的人除了变呃把自己刻画成变形为美洲豹
的样子以外，他们也真实的、确实的改变自己的外貌来显示自己与众不同的地位。呃，比如说采取脱牙纹身，还有头发整形之类的。然后这边大家看到的就是一个绿制的面具，啊，可以看到上述的那些特征。他脸上有呃，脸上的纹饰是，呃，纹身，然后呃，牙齿很明显就是那个凹凹坑坑的牙齿是脱牙的结果。So if you imagine that side to side Lorenzo, it's not just the giant stone heads that are impressive. The actual leaders themselves would change their physical appearance and look very striking as they walk through the community. Interestingly, this is an object which shows a, a child um, uh, in the form of the wear Jaguar. And this, because he's displayed about it as a baby and the sort of head being crazy modified his eyes. And this is interesting because it might give an indication of how power is transferred through generations and that it is inherited by children rather than earned during life. <laughs> 被抱在怀里，然后这个贵族幼儿呈现出半人半美猪道的形象，这呃表现了呃幼儿从出生开始，通过血缘关系，他就继承了呃那个统治权力。So now I'm going to take you to another site called La Venta,、um, which is another Olmec site, and this is the first planned out town in the Americas. So it's the first Place where people decide the layout of the town before they live there. So here you can see the the, the buildings all aligned about 15 degrees off north, and that's just the street plan of the archaeological site. 下面我们来到拉文塔，另外一个阿尔梅克遗址，它非常特殊的是，它是美洲第一个呃在人不允许以前先进行规划，然后再建造城市的这样一个城市。呃，通过这个平面图，大家可以看到它是。呃，沿着中轴线，所有的建筑这个中轴线，它是北偏西十五度，嗯，正好是完美的北偏西十五度高度。At La Venta, you also find the first pyramid built in the Americas. 在拉文塔，大家我们也发现了在美洲的第一座天桥。And what's interesting about the pyramid is that in front of it, you have a very large public plaza. Where people would gather, and in the plaza, you can start to see large stone artworks which would have lined round the edge of this plaza. 呃，这个灯塔的前面一般会有一个非面积非常大的公公共的广场，然后在这个广场的这个周围呢，会有大家看到的巨大的呃石雕作品围围在那个广场周围。So these public plazas were the place of sort of communication and social gathering. This is where those public artworks that might have reflected the symbols of power, like the Wear Jaguar, would be displayed, so that common people, when they came into the town, would understand the message that the leaders were trying to, 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 to tell them, that the, the, the leadership had the power to control these aspects, which were the justification for their power within society. One,首先，它对民众来说，它是一个社交生活的场所。然后，另外一点，对另外一个对统治者来说，它是统治者呃对公众对外宣扬自己政治权利的一种手段。当一个外来人来到这个地方的时候，他就很明显可以感受到这个
这种公众场合，呃，一个很大的广场上面，你就会发现当地的政府在这边树立酒瓶，然后这边也是呃那个民众聚集的地方，然后通过这些酒瓶，通过这个广场去来怎么样本身来体现政治权利。What I really like about La Lenta is that if you go, you're on the pyramid, you look down the public plaza, behind you, there is an elite courtyard on the other side of the temple, which is a place where only the rulers gathered, and it's just a small space behind the back of the pyramid. Uh, 对，这个下面有一小块，这个空间是贵族的庭院，然后它的面积不是很大，但是它非常重要，它只有统治者可以在这边聚集并且使用这个地方。So here you can just see the、uh, a spatial diagram of the public plaza in front of the pyramid and this very small little courtyard behind. 那大家这张图上面看到就是这个巨大金字塔的前面一大块的地方是给中年的公众的广场。然后它背后有一小块那个土地形成的小区，突出出来那部分就是呃贵族专用的区域。And in this elite courtyard, there have been some very beautiful artworks found, very densely concentrations of buried objects reflecting the Olmec world. So this is one of my favorite little collection projects. These objects were found in this position in the ground. So what you see is a gathering of Olmec elite. You can see their cranially modified skulls, where they've all been、um, cranially modified. You can see their,、um, their, their distinctive eye lines、uh, and flared mouths. And they are gathered around a little group by the stella in a form of discussion or communication. And these objects remind me of those tuchos of the Muisca because they were buried in the ground. They weren't designed like the things of the public plaza and public display. These objects, the power of these objects, is in the social memory that was created by the people who must have witnessed them being buried in the ground. And perhaps it represents the actual people represented here are reflecting the discussions and communication going on within this very elite compound when the burial of these objects is taking place. <coughs> 这一组东西就有股让我想到前面讲过的穆斯卡人的那个叫汤豪的金童和金童小人人，他认为呃他的那个作用跟汤豪是一样的，就是说是呃汤豪是埋在地里面用的，然后这些东西也是呃他们代表的是一种社会共同的记忆，呃那这些在啊呃在这个遗址上面的这些。呃，首领这样的人在聚会讨论的事情呢，可能他们就是在参加某种仪式，然后在这个仪式上，呃，是要把类似的祭祀品要埋入地下的这样一个处理。So it's really important to highlight at this point that those objects were made of jadeite, a green stone that only comes from a location、uh, a thousand miles away in what is now the Rio Motagua in what is now Guatemala, and the materials. That are reflected at sites like La Venta represent the power of the elite to open up huge trade routes of new materials. So here you can just see some of those.、There、on the right, you start to see some of the jadeites,、um, which are coming from the Rio Tagua. You also get、uh, mica, which is coming from、um, the areas of Oaxaca, and、uh, obsidian, which is a volcanic glass, which comes from the central highlands of Mexico. So these materials show the power of the elite of the Olmec to gain materials. And they also reflect the ability、uh, of the elite to give the people better materials or a better sort of quality of life. Uh, 
看到的是在奥尔梅克社会中从其他地方运来的物资，呃，右边呢是前面讲过的一个女士从伊玛拉那边运来，呃，然后左上。呃，那个上面这个东西叫麦卡，是一种石料，上面用来制作颜料和呃那个镶嵌用的那那个、小块小块石头用在的颜色，嗯、呃，是也是从其他地方运来，然后左下这个呃黑曜石是从叫哈卡的地方运来的，也是比较有名的东西。This highlight is an important point. Are the people of the Olmec willing to take on the control of the elite, the control of the rulers? Because they believe the narrative of the art in the public classes that they uh, that the leaders have special power linked to the, um, the jaguar that gives them the divine right to then control the people, or is it that the leaders allow a better quality of life through the control of large and extensive trade networks that provide the material for a better quality of life, but also reflect a wider stability? And ability of people to live in safety and security with better resources. 那这边问题就来到，呃，阿尔梅克的民众他们愿意让，呃，这些领导者领导他们，是因为领导者通过艺术宣扬了自己的权威呢，还是说是领导者通过控制贸易，通过呃控制物资，来给民众提供了呃更安全？到呃生存环境以及更丰富的、更多样化的生活方式，更多的物资呢。This power for me, the power of access is is not to be underestimated. The the power of access is what allows the people to have this better quality of life, and it also shows a little bit of vulnerability, because if it's not about a belief system. Uh, in the leadership, which comes from your sort of your mind and core, if it's actually about the quality of life that you have, then there is a vulnerability because if the Olmec elite don't control the uh, quality of life, or there's a problem with the economy, uh, then it holds vulnerabilities for the sustainability of the town and the power of the elite. 那问呃这边又引申出一个更深的问题，就是说如果当地的民众不是因为呃艺术表现，或者说呃。艺术是艺术表现的这个权威吗？然后如果不是通过这种就是呃信仰体系，就是信仰我们的领导，呃信仰我们的呃领袖是某种接近神的人物的这样的信仰，呃来臣服于他的统治的话，啊、呃、而是呃而是因为他们的所以能够呃提供更好的生活而臣服于他的呃而臣服于他的话，那就有一个呃非常严重的问题，就是也是这个系统里面。一个非常巨大的弱点，那就是当这个统治者如果不能提供这些物资条件和生活的时候，怎么办？ So yes, for me, these objects represent acts of power, but it's not just about acts of power. There's another aspect of all that culture that I want to show you, which is related to a, a different side of life. 那他呃，这边大家看到的是呃那个艺术与生活的表现，然后他希望从另外一个角度。So this is the site of El Manati, uh, which was a uh, sort of little watering hole for cattle uh, in a rural area. And during a drought, some remarkable finds were found. In the banks of the of the, of the watering hole, uh, a whole series of wooden figures were found, and these were made of wood, which is very rarely preserved at this age. And when they're radiocarbon carbon dated, they were very very old, three and a half thousand years. And you can see the distinctive Olmec features with the the crazy modified head, the distinctive eyes and mouth. Uh, in this area, in this area, in this area, 大家看到的这个木雕像，呃，这个是非常难得的，因为木头在自然环境里面会腐烂，它不会保存下来。但是这些东西因为水的密度，它保存下来，然后通过碳十字，所以它们形成颜色。发现它们的表现大概在三千到四千年之间。And these uh Olmec leaders or Olmec representations of Olmec leaders were thrown into this this pool of water, 
And this pool of water, as is common both in the Olmec and later traditions in ancient Mexico, these pools of water represent one of these liminal spaces. The jaguar <coughs> is a powerful beast that controls the sort of this, these border spaces, liminal space, between night and day. This water represents one of those liminal spaces as you can travel down into a different world, into a spiritual world. Uh,这些木雕像,它的石头方式是比较完美空满的人脑的流水里面去,为什么要通过那一弯的水带表呢,呃,它的象征意义跟前面说的每周报是一样的,它是一种,呃,有临界点,是一个绿土之间,呃,
but it's one where you find the preserved full court at the site. So here you can see the ball game court just here on the right hand side. Uh, the Mexican ball game um, starts off in the Olmec period, is the earliest evidence we have of it, but it's played right up until the European contact. Um, it's a game where you're not allowed to use your hands or your feet, and you knock the ball up and down this rectangular court, banging it with your hip or your shoulders, and the ball is not allowed to stop on your side of the court, so you've always got to keep knocking it back to the other side. Uh,最近在看到右边显示的就是球场了，然后这种球类游戏，从最早到我们科学期刊设立时到以欧洲人接触以后，呃，也也呃一直当地人一直在玩，然后它的呃玩法呢，其实说你要用你的屁股来顶
时间上讲到那个权力的扩张了。奥尔姆克的文化影响力是非常巨大的，它呃影响了中美洲这边巨大的区域，呃，向西到到墨西哥、太平洋沿岸，然后到向南呢，影响到今天的危地马拉。呃，这些都是发生在呃三千五百年前，嗯、呃，然后呢，呃，在学术上面，大家有很多猜，呃，学学者有很多猜测，认为奥尔姆克影响之大，它直接影响的，直接影响被诱导产生了玛雅文化，但是不是这样，我们这边暂且不提。但是这个在政治权力的传播下，呃，啊，在这种艺术形式。嗯的传播背后也显示着政治，呃，政治权力的，呃，那个扩散和传播。The last site that I'll take you to today is a, a site, a cave site called Kushtalawaka, which reflects the ability of art to spread around the region. So this is a cave、uh, that you have to go into in the state of Guerrero today, and as you go into the cave, you then have to travel for a mile down through the cave system. Right to the furthest stretches of the cave. Uh, we today want to take you to the last site, which is the site of Huastalawaka, located on the coast of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it is a mountain site. Uh, when we go to that site, we have to go to the mountain to go up to the summit. And when you get down to the very furthest chamber that you can possibly reach, and the air starts to get hard to breathe, up on the wall you can see this, which is a, a hand-painted figure、um, of an Olmec figure. You can see the cranially modified skull. You can see the the cape of a jaguar coming down on the arms and legs. You can just see that mottling of the of the jaguar pelt. And this is a representation of Olmec art that has spread hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the Olmec heartlands. And for me, it represents the power of art as a medium to spread power and influence into other territories. And I think that's、uh, that can be highlighted、uh, by no one better than the Olmec. 到这个山洞里面以后呢，就走几公里的路，然后到了它呃非常深的地方，深到你会觉得呼吸都变得稀薄，然后都不能呼吸的这个地方，会发现。这个小小的岩画，它是当时连锁工艺画的，它画的是奥尔姆克人物。呃，但是他前面他没有讲这个遗址与奥尔姆克，呃，与那个前面讲的恩坦之泉对吗？嗯，然后通过这个，呃，就是这样子的这个岩画，就告诉我们，呃，奥尔姆克的这个文化，它呃文化和艺术，它的传播有多么的深远。So when we start to think about the role then between art and power, we start to see that art can be used as the mechanism by which the elite communicate the justification of their power. We also see that it's the way in which they spread that message and influence beyond their home territory and communicate it with other people. In the Americas, we see a huge diversity in the way that art can be used. But in ancient Mexico, we see the power to control this space between the everyday life and the spiritual, the realm of the controlled and the realm of the uncontrolled, is what gives the elite of the Olmec leaders their power, and that is reflected in art traditions that are then passed down for thousands of years through the generations into the other societies that rise up in the region. So thank you very much for listening to that. Um, 最后呢，这个我们就可以看到，啊，不好意思，前面那个壁画它描绘的人物是呃，奥尔姆克的贵族，所以呢，就是大家，我们这个整个讲座从今天来说，就可以看到奥尔姆克如何变成一个在变成普通社会以后产生了贵族人群，呃，并且贵族人群利用艺术来表现自己的权威和地位，呃，然后同时。这种文化和艺术形式又进行扩，呃，又通过各种渠道，呃，比如说贸易，然后达到扩散，到到集这个呃，奥尔姆克文化中心非常远的地方。我们也看到了艺术的不同的各种不同的使用方式，也看到了那个建筑，就是我们平时看这个构造。
就是当地当时的统治者怎么样通过不同制空间来显示自己的权利，呃，也呃最后一点也谈到了呃统治者如何运用这种可以控制的呃。自己可以控制的领域，就是人的领域和不能控制的领域，来打造自己，呃呃，来来来打造，来宣扬自己的权利。然后像所有的这一切，他们在当地的影响都持续了几千年。那谢谢大家。